I think what it was with DB is that after Mick left, and he was going to go in a bit more of a different direction, he needed whatever the hell it was that I did, because I was a blues player. I mean, you know, for me, it was all about, you know. You know, or. It was, it was all about the Stones, Chuck Berry, uh, Lightning Hopkins, you know, all that. Uh, Bo Diddley, it was about blues, really, blues and rock and roll. He gave me all the freedom in the world to do anything I wanted on stage, as well as the studio. I mean, ideas for songs. He would come up with a chord thing and say, well, I don't know where to go, or you have a lick. And I'd be going, OK, um, let me see what I got. I'd play some. That sucks. OK, let me try this. Ah, now you got it, all right? And vice versa. And when we did stay, we used to do a song called John and Molly Dancing, which is an older song of his. And he said, I want to redo it, but it needs to, you know, I, I, there's no sense redoing it the way we did it. So let's see if we come up with something new. And he says, Slicky, come up, g give me a riff of something to go with. And that's where the, uh, the opening riff came from. <laughs> So we start with the general and dancing, and then somehow it started to morph, and he started to get ideas, and he came back, and he had that riff with some chords for the verses that were different than John and Molly dancing, but the verse, the chorus chords were the same. So he ended up taking what was going to be a redo of John and turned it into stay, because the riff twisted his head into another direction. On Golden Years, he needed a riff, too. OK. OK. Two different riffs, very similar. Cream, Outside Woman Blues. Okay. And then there's bits of funky Broadway. Right? So they were both in my head, and I wasn't thinking about it at the time. But I, I that's, so I ended up. And I'm like, finally. When you take something like, uh, like Stay or Golden Years, they're my riffs based on my influences. And it's not the same guitar sound, you know, it's not even the same feel, really, but it's stuff that was in my head that seemed to work with when Dave was just going. That wasn't going to cut it. We needed something else. So we come up with, right? So. That's where the flavor will come in, and that's what's expected of me. When we did Valentine's Day, uh, which uh, was on the next day. And David started to sing and he didn't, it, we, we had acoustics. Uh, we were sitting in the control room. The way he was singing and, his, and, his, and the chord changes, melody and the feel of it, and I, I, I just got this vision of a... Uh, <laughs> Kinks, Waterloo Sunset. And as soon as I said kinks, he went, oh my god, yeah. And then the riff at the beginning we needed, you know, so we messed around with that. You know. It's totally old kink stuff.
which on the recording, the way it was mixed, you really don't hear a lot of it, but it's there. To me, that was like a tribute to Ray Davies and Dave Davies for coming up with that song, as, to, as it was to David. He even uses a line from it in the song. Thank you.